Hey, what's up? Joe in Vegas here with another review, another 80s review. I'm still in my 80s vortex spiral where it's just been nonstop 80s shows lately. I don't know what's going on. I'm loving it. Don't get me wrong. It's just weird. This summer seems so far starting off as like an 80s summer because everybody coming through town is an old 80s act. But like I said, I'm not hating on it. I'm enjoying it. I love the 80s. Um, I used to say it was the last era of good music. I'm starting to feel like maybe the 90s is after the 90s it just fucking went off a a cliff there's no more music so um to weird al interesting review weird al is let's see when when the 80s were blowing up and the michael jacksons and the madonnas and the mtv era he found this little niche where he was per he was the perfect guy the perfect personality to kind of poke fun at these monsters these titans of music these 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 songs that were so big and he figured out a way to kind of bring everybody down to earth a little bit say hey don't forget this music's fun and 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 he did such a great job and and it was from an era of uh uh videos so he had the opportunity to not only make fun of the songs and the lyrics, but bring them to life in the videos. And like I said, he was the perfect face. He had the perfect between the hair and the Hawaiian shirts and the accordion. He was just perfect. Somewhere in there, he put out a movie. I don't uh, remember what year it was, a UHF movie, which I, I still love. I think it was hilarious. It's still a funny movie. Um, as you know, Michael Richards, who went on to play Kramer, was a big part of that movie and the uniqueness of that movie. Um, but Weird Al out of the gate cemented himself is I am doing my own thing. I'm in my own freaking lane and either you like it or you don't like it. And people like it. And people clearly like it all these years later in the nineties. He got more, he kept going with the white and nerdy and the Amish paradise. And, and he just never stopped. And because there's no reason to really stop except, uh, I would think publishing or artists just not getting it or want to be involved in this crap, taking themselves too seriously. Um, but yeah, he's he's out there on tour. I've never seen him before. It's the first time I'm seeing him, so I was pretty excited. I did peek at the set list before I went, and I and I very quickly realized that I don't know how much I'm going to enjoy the show. So this is where the interest the, the review gets interesting. I I left the review. I think it, it was for Cheap Trick. There's certain bands that have these die hard followings, loyalists. I realized. Those guys, like almost every night, though, the, the the artist knows about their following, and these are people who go to all the shows. And he wants, they want to. There, there's a fine line that the artist has to has to pay. He has to play to those people who are very critical. They're your base. They're your bread and butter. But then there's also casual fans who who just want to see you and just want to, you to play your hits, and that's all they want to hear. And they'll gladly pay money to go see that. And for certain artists, a lot of artists, fuck it. We're just playing the hits. We're good. That's it. And some artists really cater to that that core audience. And I looked at the set list before, and I didn't see any of those hits from back in the day. I didn't see the Fat or the Eat It or the Like a Virgin, Surgeon, and, and any of those big hits that I remember that made him huge. I didn't see any of that. So I was like, oh, man, I don't want to go to this show. Uh, I started looking more at the set list, and I saw something about he he doesn't play the same songs every night. And then I realized, okay, he's he's one of those guys who really I think he does his live shows for his hardcore fans more than that. So uh, I have to be careful because those hardcore fans are the ones that get really upset with some of my reviews because I'm not a hardcore Weird Al Yankovic fan. I am a casual kid from the '80s who wanted to come see Fat and Eat It and like a surgeon and stuff like that. Now, I did have his old albums, and I do love some of those deeper cuts, the Dare to be Stupids, and the, I love that song from that movie, I think it was Johnny Dangerously, uh, This Is the Life, that little uh, song about about being a baller. and th- He had a bunch of stuff, uh, One More Minute. I did have those albums, Lost on Jeopardy. I, so I knew some of those deeper cuts. I only saw, going through the set list, I still didn't see he had those, I guess, more popular deeper cuts in the set list. They were pretty deep stuff. So, uh, please understand this video is from coming from the angle of someone who, who wants to see the hits. Now, I did think about it more that day, and I think maybe the reason he actually doesn't play the hits is a monetary reason, which does make a little sense to me. I'm sure he had to give up a good chunk of his publishing to Michael Jackson and to Madonna and to all these people to cover their songs, which would mean 40 years later, if he plays them live in concert, 
he's got to pay them royalties. Now, that would be fine if you're a band like, let's say, Disturbed, who covered Paul Simon's Sound of uh, uh, Sound of, Sound of Silence. I'm going to break. Going, uh, having a brain fart. Uh, Sound of Silence. Um, if you have one song in your set, two songs in your set, and you got to pay Paul Simon on that one song, okay, that's doable. But when you're Weird Al Yankovic and all your biggest hits are have to be paid out to artists, it doesn't leave that much meat on the bone for him to make a living. He's out doing the work. So that might be the reason. And if someone is a diehard fan of listening to this and that is the reason, then let me know. I'm kind of curious. But that would make sense to me. It's a business thing more than a fuck you to the to the casual fans. So that being said, let's get into the set list. It was let me say the show was at the Venetian. If you haven't been there, the most beautiful, beautiful theater in Las Vegas. There's not a lot of shows there. When they have shows there, go run and see them. Uh, the last show I saw there was Steve Miller Band. That room was built 30 years ago for Phantom of the Opera, and they left it. So it's got all this woodwork and this massive chandelier. It's a beautiful theater. It's a wonderful place to see a show. Uh, it's it's really well done. So there's not a bad seat on that first level. You can sit in the back row, and you're still in a pretty good seat. So keep that in mind. Okay, so... So here's the thing about the songs. I didn't know most of them. Almost all of them I did not know. But the talent of Weird Al and the uniqueness of him is in his lyrics. And he's a very clear when he sings. And his music is very good music. It's, not, it's, it's very... If he's playing a rock song, it sounds like a rock song. If he's playing a ballad, it sounds like a ballad. Is it exceptional you know, musicianship in, in writing? No, but the lyrics are exceptional. So what happens is, without knowing any songs, you can actually enjoy these songs because you listen to the lyrics and you're like, this is hilarious or this guy's crazy. And there were a couple of songs in there that I never heard before. A lot of songs I never heard before. But there were a couple that really stood out. The first time you hear them, you're like, this is great. So getting into that. He started with Close But No Cigar. This second song I remember very well. We really liked it. It's a song called My Baby's In Love With Eddie Vedder, which speaks for itself. And you can imagine the lyrics that go with the song like that. Dating a girl who loves Eddie Vedder. You know, and it's, it's, again, there's a skill and there's a talent in the fact that you can hear songs for the first time and get them and understand them and hear the words. And that's, that's great. Then he wrote, don't download this song about downloading, uh, that was written when the, uh, Napster stuff was happening. I remember Larry, he did the theme song for UHF, which I knew that from the movie. Uh, he had a drum solo, which I don't know if that was a song, but he said drum solo and the guy hit like doom, doom, on the drums and then. That was it. And I don't know if that's the joke, drum solo, or the song after it was drum solo. I don't know. He had a song called Osuya, which, again, the lyrics were great. It was just about suing every corporation for everything. My Own Eyes. Now, at this point, he gets to Dare to be Stupid, which I do know from my childhood. Now, Dare to be Stupid, I liked as a kid. I liked it. I, I remembered all the words. It was one of those songs. I don't know how big of a hit it was, or it was just cut from an album. I don't remember. I'm not going to pretend like I know his uh, his chart history. But... This is where I started to get a little annoyed. So he finally got to a song that was a hit from, from back and from what I wanted to see, and he completely changed it. It was like a bossa nova version of it. Again, it wasn't bad, but it's like, yeah, come on, man. You're not playing a bunch of hits, so when you play something that's a little bit bigger of a hit, it would have been nice to hear it as you wrote it. So that started to get to me a little bit. The next song I thought was probably his best song of the night. It was a Doors cover or it was a cover, it was a song called Craigslist, but he did it as Jim Morrison, it sounded like a Doors song, I thought it was an interesting song, he really did a great job covering on Velvet Elvis, which I think I kind of remembered, um, Let Me Be Your Hog, I think that was the one line song, yeah, he had little speeches in between, explaining and talking, and he's an interesting guy, and I, I enjoyed that, uh, Dog Eat Dog, You Don't Love Me Anymore, Young, Dumb, and Ugly, now, at this point is where I felt the show started to get a little tiresome, honestly, because you want to hear hits, and if you're just sitting there listening to songs for the first time, they're not bad, and it's not a bad show, but you start, like, something inside of me, and this is me, this is my opinion. If you're a diehard fan, you're loving this shit, you're hearing songs you never get to hear, but the anxiety inside of me starts saying, fuck, man, I want to start hearing some hits, something that, that I know, um... So then he sang Buy Me a Condo, which I also remember from back in the day. And I didn't know all the words to that song. And because of his lyrics, they're easy to remember. And this one he actually did true to form. And it was the first time of the night where I heard a song I knew that sounded exactly like it was back in the day. 
and then you start to get a little hope. And then at the same time, you start to get a little mad. Like, why, why aren't you playing some of this old shit? Lost on Jeopardy. And, like, you start getting a little mad. Like, dude, you know? The next one, also, I like this. First time I ever heard it. I don't know if it was a hit or not. It, the lyrics are absolutely batshit crazy. It's the night Santa went crazy. Speaks for himself. Santa just starts killing all the elves and the reindeers. I thought it was great. I think it's, it's good, but it's, it's, I don't know. Next is uh, Nature Trail to Hell. Then the biggest ball of twine in Minnesota. And then he, he finished that. He came back with the encore. Did Viva Las Vegas the way it's supposed to be done. Yes, that was good. But I'm telling you, as a guy who goes to shows, almost all these guys play Viva Las Vegas. And it's fine. I'm, I'm fine with it. And then this is the part that he closes out with. And this is probably, again, I, I, I the more I think about it, and I would love it if somebody would know to tell me. it's it's. I think this is a publishing deal. I think you're allowed to play like 30 seconds of of songs without having to play publishing. So what he did at the end was he did a bit of a, me- a melody of a bunch of different one of his hits, uh, a bunch of hits put together. And it reminded me of those old albums. And again, I'm not a diehard fan, but I did have those old albums. He had those polka things at the end or somewhere in those albums where he's really fast, jumping around to all these different songs, playing his accordion. This wasn't a polka sound but it was the same vibe it was like a toot, 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 of all the hits one after the other and circling around and he squeezed a lot of stuff in a seven or eight minute mel- mel- melody not a melody mel- yeah i'm losing the word i'm sorry i drank too much last night it's like a mel- uh, not a melody you know what i mean a mashup it's a mashup of, of a bunch of songs so it's that mashup included amish paradise which was one of his biggest hits smells like nirvana that was a huge hit white and nerdy that also might have been one of his biggest hits Word Crimes and Yoda. Now, great. It was good. It was it was one of the better parts of the night. But if the reason he's not playing these full songs because of publishing, I understand it, but it's still not the, the fairest thing for the, for the fans. But that's the dilemma he's in, and I get why. So I look at this mashup, and I think, well, if he would have played these songs individually as a whole... And then would have thrown "Eat It" and "Lost on Jeopardy" and "Fat" and and like and his other massive hits from back in the day. Um, it would have been a hell of a set list, and that's what I was hoping for initially, and it wasn't. So even though the mashup is is great, it kind of reminds you of how great this show could have been, and it wasn't because of that. If I hope that makes sense, I'm hope I'm articulating it right. And I know the diehard fans are gonna kill me, and blah, 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 but I don't give a fuck. Go fuck yourselves. I don't give a shit. I'm just telling you my opinion of the show as a casual fan and it was cool to see him and i feel thankful and honored i got to see this guy one time in my life because he is a big part of my life and i thank him and i and and i appreciate all the music and all the laughs and all the smiles he's given me throughout my life and for that that's awesome but like i said that mashup reminds me of how the show could have been if he paid all the songs individually plus the other big ones plus some of those other deeper cuts like the buy me a condo and dare to be stupid and and you know one more minute and those kinds of songs so for that i'm going to give him a 6.8 out of 10 it could have been a, a really really good show instead it was just a solid show and it was nice and i'm happy i went the tickets were not expensive i definitely would tell anybody to go see him it's a good it's a good enough show all right this is getting long if you've seen him you agree if you disagree be nice just comment subscribe i like hearing everybody's comments thanks for listening i'll see you at the next show bye-bye